Hello, in today's video we are going to discuss different methods of proving triangles congruent. In geometry, we need to prove that all the parts are equal of each figure in order to say that they are congruent. So a triangle, say, has six parts, has three sides. So AB is congruent to DE. We know that because each one has a single tick mark. And then we'll go to the double tick marks. AC is going to be congruent to DF because each of them are marked the same. And then we'll finish it up with the triple tick marks. BC is congruent to EF. So the triangles have three sets of sides that are congruent. They are also going to have three sets of angles that are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle D. And we know that because each angle has three arcs in there, and that's how we mark off angles as being equal. Angle C is congruent to angle F. Each has double arcs. And last but not least, angle B is congruent to angle E. Okay, so you, theoretically, you would have to get a list of six items. If we were going to name these triangles, okay, we get to name the first one any way we want, but we have to name the second one by the corresponding parts that are equal. So angle A is equal to angle D, angle B is equal to angle E, angle C is equal to angle F. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, so we'd have to make a list of six parts in order to say this. So if we have a four-sided figure, your list would be eight parts. If you had five-sided figures, your list would be ten parts, so it gets kind of tedious. Triangles, however, have shortcuts. Instead of getting a list of all six parts, we have certain combinations of sides or angles that would allow us to take shortcuts to prove that triangles are congruent. Our first one is the side, side, side postulate. You can pause the video, you can copy this down if you want. Okay. All this says is if you have three sides of one triangle that are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, and I don't know about the angles, okay, that is enough information to say that the triangles are congruent. So we can say, let's go triangle AGM is congruent to triangle QRC. Now somebody else might have wanted to call this first one triangle MGA and that's okay but then we have to name the second one. We have to change the order of the name of the second one. If you know this one is okay then you could just rearrange the letters in the same order or you look down in the picture and you see if this triangle were sitting on top of this triangle, this other one would be CRQ. Okay, so this list, instead of being six items long, this list would only be three items long, and that's enough information. Our second way of proving triangles are congruent is called side angle side. And in this method here, our list is still only three items long but it's a different combination of three items. So it's two sides and an angle. Now, the angle is included between the two sides. Okay, by that we mean, I'm gonna put an S on here, because that designates the side, and an S on here, and this would be our angle. So notice, two sides and the angle is in between the two sides. So where these sides come down and meet is where the angle would have to be located for this to be side, angle, side. And then your second triangle would have to be marked off exactly the same as your first triangle in order to be side, angle, side. When you're looking at these reasons, you are not looking at both triangles individually, okay? You just look at the one triangle and make sure it matches one of our patterns, and then your second triangle has to match the first triangle. And then you are allowed to name the triangles say DRG is congruent to triangle LAF because of the side angle side postulate. The next method to prove triangles are congruent is the angle side angle congruence postulate. 
And the angle side angle congruent postulate is when we are using a combination of two angles and the side that is included between the two angles. Okay, so the included side would be this side and at the end of that one segment would be one of the angles and at the end, the other end of the segment would be the other angle. Okay, so angle, side, angle, side is in between the two angles. This triangle here would line up with the same markings and then what we can do is we can say the triangles are congruent. We'll name this one triangle BRW is congruent to triangle Okay, I started with the B with the double arcs, so I got to start with the G with the double arcs. I went down to the R with no arcs, so I got to come down here to the C with no arcs and finish it up with the J. And that would be an example of angle side angle. Our next method of proving triangles are congruent is very similar to the previous one. This one is angle, angle, side. So again, this has two angles and a side, just like our previous one. However, notice where the side is located. The side is not in between the two angles. We call that a non-included side. Okay, so you would have an angle and another angle, two angles and a side. Remember, if we want to try to match this pattern, we just want to really look at one triangle here. And then we want to make sure that the second triangle is marked off accordingly. All right, angle, angle, side. So you have two angles and the side that is not included between the two angles. If you have trouble deciding whether it is included or not included, usually it's easier to remember what this looks like, ASA. Okay, ASA would be two angles. So I'm going to mark off two angles. And it would be the side that's included, the side in between the two angles. So if you can look at this and say, hey, that's not ASA, but I have two angles and a side, then by default it would be angle, angle, side. Which side would have to be equal in order for it to be ASA? Well, the side that would have to be equal would be FL. I would re need the tick mark here rather than over here. And then we can say triangle FAL is congruent to triangle HZB. because of angle, angle, side. Our last method of proving triangles congruent would be hypotenuse leg. Hypotenuse leg theorem can only be used on a right triangle because a right triangle is the only type of triangle that has a hypotenuse. If we look at these two triangles, we know this is a right triangle because we have the right angle symbols down here. This side here would be our hypotenuse. and this side here would be our leg. Okay, We can then say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now if you're tempted to put labels on here, if you're tempted to put labels on here and you want to put an S on here and an S here and an A over here, and the only thing we have with two S's and an A is S-A-S. And remember, the A has to be included between the two sides. It has to be in between where the sides meet. So which angle would have to be marked off for this to be S-A-S? would have to be angle C. It's where the two sides, A-C and B-C, would come together. All right. This angle is not in between the two sides. So maybe you would be tempted to write something like this, okay? SSA is not one of our five choices. Even if you wrote it forwards or backwards, it is still not one of our choices. If you're ever tempted to write SSA down, okay, you know you have to be making an error here. All right, so I hope this video was informative, and we will see you on the next video.